In this GIMP tutorial, we'll be making this striped background design, which could be used for a desktop wallpaper or a GIMP splash screen or whatever else you can think of. Before we get started, you'll need two things for this tutorial. You'll need at least one uh, grungy sort of paper texture for, that we're going to use in the background. So I'll put a link in the description for the one I'm using if you want to download that and use that for this tutorial. And another thing is you'll need at least one splatter brush. If you don't have any splatter brushes, I'll put a download link in the description where you can download a pack of splatter brushes that I made myself. Or you can click on this annotation right here and watch my video tutorial on how to make your own splatter brushes in GIMP. So once you have those, we'll go ahead and get started. So first of all, I'll create a new image. So I'm going to use this kind of reddish color for one of my sets of stripes. So go ahead and use your bucket fill tool to fill in your background with that color. Next you need to choose your other color for your stripes. I'll use this kind of dark purple. And then um, you want to go to Filters, Render, Pattern, Grid. Now this gives us both horizontal and vertical lines, but we just want vertical stripes. So we need to unlink this chain link and change the horizontal width to zero so the horizontal lines disappear entirely. Then the vertical lines will go ahead and change to about 40 pixels. I'm using that because um, it's a nice large size and it divides evenly into the width of my canvas, which is 600 pixels. For the spacing, you'll want to go ahead and change this to be uh, two times the value that you used for the vertical width, because this is essentially the width of one color stripe plus the width of the other color stripe. So if you want both colors to be the same width, then you will use double the value that you entered there. For the offset, you can just change that to zero. Okay, so there are our stripes. Now we're going to add the texture that hopefully you've already downloaded and saved onto your computer. So go ahead and go to File, Open as Layers, and open that texture. It's a large file, so you'll want to decrease the size of the layer probably by going to Layer, Scale Layer. And I'm going to just change this to 1000, so it's a little more reasonable size to work with. Then go to Colors Desaturate to make it black and white. Next, use your Move tool with it set to Move the Active Layer and just move this texture around. Find a spot in the texture that you'd like for your background. Then set that mode, the layers mode, to soft light and decrease the opacity to about 70%. Next, make a new layer. Get your rectangular select tool and drag out a selection that goes all the way across your canvas like this. And then get your bucket fill tool and fill in that selection with black. Then make a new layer and fill in the same selection with the actual color that you want to use for this horizontal strip. In my case, I'm using this light pink. Next, get your rectangle select tool again and click inside the selection so you get these control handles back. Now click on the top section and drag this handle down. Hold down the control key also so that you drag both the top and the bottom edges inwards. You want this to be about 10 pixels down. Then use your bucket fill tool to fill in this part of the selection with a darker color of the same color that you started with. Now make a new layer. Reset your colors to black and white. Get your blend tool, make sure it's on all the default settings, and drag a straight gradient up like this. Hold down the control key to make it stay perfectly vertical. Then uh, set that layer's mode to soft light and decrease the opacity to about 30%. Now make another new layer. And we're going to add some horizontal lines across this strip. So we're going to go back to Filters, Reshow Grid. And this time we're going to add some white lines. So click on this box and change the color white. And like I said, we want them to be horizontal. So we're going to change the vertical width to zero. And the horizontal width is just going to be 1 and a spacing of about 4 pixels. Then press OK. We're done with that selection now, so you can go to Select None. And then set that layers mode to Soft Light and decrease the opacity to about 40%. OK, now go back to this black layer. The reason we made that is for a shadow. So go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And change this radius to around 20.
Then get your Move tool, click on the layer, make sure you have Move the Active Layer selected, and then click on the layer and use your down arrow key to move the shadow down about 5 or 10 pixels. Next, set the layer's mode to soft light and decrease the opacity to around 60%. Okay, now click on your topmost layer and make a new layer above that. Then get your ellipse select tool, so drag out a circular shape. You can hold down the um, shift key to make it say perfectly circular. And if you want to move it around, go ahead and do that. Okay, so then we're going to fill it in with black. Make a new layer. And this time we're going to fill it in, at least I'm going to use this kind of light purplish color. Then get your lip select tool. Click inside the selection so you get your control handles back. And then hold down control and shift and drag this inwards. Now you fill that in with a slightly darker version of that same color. Then make a new layer. Reset your colors to black and white. Get your blend tool and drag a straight gradient up like this, like we did before. Set that layer's mode to soft light and lower the opacity to about 30%. Next, make a new layer. And this is where we'll need the splatter brushes, so get your paintbrush tool, change to one of your splatter brushes. Um, if it's really big like mine, then you'll want to decrease the scale to, I'm using 0.2. It should be around the size of your circle. And you just want to click a couple times in here with black to paint some splats. Then set that layers mode to soft light. Decrease the opacity to around 40%. And then you can go ahead and do select none. Next, go back to your black layer. We're going to turn this one into a shadow also. So go to filters, reshow, Gaussian blur, and leave this set on the same settings. Then use your move tool to move that layer down a few pixels once again. And again, set it to soft light and decrease the opacity to about 60%. Now we can finally add our text. So get your text tool and make sure your foreground color is, um, actually, I'm going to use this kind of pink. And the font I'm using is called Sego Print and the size I'm going to use is 100 pixels. I'm also going to decrease the spacing between the letters a little just so they're a little closer together. Then click on your canvas and type your text. Whoops, I forgot. This should be above everything else. So Then use your move tool to position it wherever you want. Now go ahead and right click on the text layer and choose alpha to selection. Then click on the layer below your text and make a new layer so that the new layer is right below your text. And then go to Select, Grow, and this should be about 5. And then fill this in with black. Again, that's going to be for a shadow. And then duplicate the layer, or make a new layer, and fill it in. Um, I'm going to use white for my border. Now you can go to Select None. Click on your the black layer, and go to Filters, Reshow, Gaussian Blur, same settings. And we're just going to make this a shadow the same exact way we did with the other two shapes. Okay, then if you want to add a slight gradient to the text like we did with the other two shapes, you can just duplicate the text layer. Reset your default colors. And then also make sure you click this box to lock the alpha channel. And drag a straight gradient up like this. Set the layers mode to soft light and decrease the opacity to about 30%. Now go back down to the bottom of your layer stack, find your texture layer, duplicate it and move it above everything else. Then use your move tool to move that duplicated texture around. So set that somewhere else and then decrease the opacity to like 30%. Finally make a new layer. Get your blend tool. We're going to use it white to black with a radial gradient. So click up above your canvas but in the middle and drag down to one of the bottom corners. Set that layer's mode to soft light and maybe decrease the opacity to about 80%. And that's the final result. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching.